Well, what's up, everybody? This is Pastor X, and I want to welcome you aboard to another edition of On the Spot, our Sunday night online conversation. Um, it's the hottest platform that you can find anywhere, and I am grateful of, of God for the favor. I am grateful of God for the opportunity to come into your space and grace us with the privilege to share um, intellectual, informative, inspirational conversation with a Christocentric uh, perspective. Um, tonight, it's going to be on like Donkey Kong. I have one of my covenant big brothers with me all the way from the 504 area code he's representing tonight. You can see him as always Don with his saints regalia. Uh, truth of the matter is uh, he's a saints fan there in New Orleans and he's a saint in the kingdom of God. My big brother from another mother, what's up Bishop? The Bishop Samuel Blakes. How you doing, man? Man, look, I'm excited to be talking to my brother tonight. I'm excited, man. Um, so proud of the work you're doing. Just so excited, man, to see um, all of the different things that God's assigned into your hands, man. And whatever you're doing, you're doing it well, brother. Well, I learned from the best, man. Hey, I grew up chasing your coattail. Um, I, I, I mean, literally, from you being reared in New Orleans, Louisiana, me being yes. here in Los Angeles, California, uh, just the favor of God been upon you ever since you was a boy preacher. Yes. I mean, flying from New Orleans, from across um, to across the country, coming in to Los Angeles. Uh, man, I've been following you like the paparazzi since I was a kid. You coming in, crashing the party at the Gethsemane Christian Love Baptist Church, you know, yes, uh, here in Los Angeles under the late Dr. L.C. Jackson. Every year you smoke that place under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, man. You know, I, I started preaching there, bro, when I was, um, I think I preached my first time there. I started doing revival there and I did it for 20 straight years. Um, I was 10 years old, the first revival I did there in LA. Wow. I remember, man, like yesterday, wall to the windows to the wall. I mean, yes. <laughs> that, that place was <laughs> packed out. Couldn't get a seat in the building. Couldn't get on Avalon Boulevard. I mean, right. I, I never forget, I was graced one year after uh, you came through and did that revival. Uh, I closed out on youth day one year. Uh, Dr. Jackson was going to Africa and wow. uh, you went back to New Orleans and I was graced to come behind you, man. Listen, I'm grateful to have you tonight. I'm excited to be here, bro. I'm excited. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, man. So much, man. Listen, let's jump in the deep end of, of the pool and swim. Uh, That's good. Today, Bishop, um, I saw a picture of you on Instagram and I, um, all I, I couldn't see you for seeing your father, you know, right. it, it was a picture of you. But when I saw you, I literally saw the late, great, legendary prophet R.C. Blake Sr., man. What a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. Take me back in time. What was that like growing up under the old man? Man, listen, you know, it's it's hard for me to even think about or talk about uh, without uh, it stirring some emotions. My old man was such a, a legendary guy. Um, he was a great preacher, great pastor, great leader, um, just made monumental moves in the church. Uh, God used him to transform uh, how church was done in the South. And, um, but beyond that, you know, a lot of guys are great in the pulpit, but they're not great at home. My old man was 
I would say, a greater father than he was a pastor, leader, preacher. Wow. He was just a great father, great husband to my mother, great example of um, righteousness and, you know, just strength and power. Um, and today, bro, I literally am standing on his shoulders with everything I do, everything my brother does. We're conscious and cognizant of the fact that um, if there had been no him, uh, we could not be where we are today, man. My father was a great guy. Man, hey, I, I bear witness to that. I mean, you know, just, you know, um, hearing about the old man. And then I'm grateful to be alive of the tail end of his life, you know. You, you right. couldn't be a serious preacher across the nation or in the fraternity of preaching and not know or heard of Prophet uh, uh, Robert C. Blake's man in uh, New Orleans, whether it was just his, his prophetic gift, whether yeah. it was those healing services on Saturday mornings, you couldn't, yeah. I mean, you had to be living up under a rock if you didn't know who uh, uh, Prophet Blake's was. Listen, he, he has been gone now for seven years. And X, when I tell you not a day goes by without someone coming up to me wanting to hold a conversation about that old man. Uh, that's the kind of impact he had on the, on the kingdom and, and the church and, and the lives of, of, of so many believers, man. He was just an impactful guy. Seven years later, I cannot walk the streets of New Orleans and many other cities without someone mentioning the legacy of my old man and something my old man said to them, a prophecy he gave, a sermon he preached, a time he helped them. Um, just, uh, just an impactful guy. And really, you know, that's my drive. That's what drives me, man, to, uh, to try to live up to. I know I'll never be able uh, to be him, but I want to be impactful like him. You know what I'm saying? When I die, somebody to know I'm gone. Wow. When I die, I want somebody to know I'm gone. Listen, yeah. listen, yeah. that's that's gonna live again, Reverend. Yes, sir. That's yes, gonna sir. live again. Let me let me let me say, uh, Bishop, that not only uh, are you living up to that. Uh, you are yourself a man of influence, a man of impact, a man of high integrity. Uh, I am, I'm graced of God to be connected to you, to uh, um, uh, have you as my big brother. I, I want to park here. Can I pause? Can I stop you just for a second? What's and it? I want to know that, you know, when we call each other brother, we're brothers for real. For real, yeah. We'll call each other and bend each other's ear. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we, we're really, really brothers. Uh, Puffin' up. And, you know, because a lot of cats say brother, but they're not brotherly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of cats say brother, but they're not brotherly. You know, if there's, if there's something that is detrimental that's going on with me, you're going to call me and say, bro, what's up with that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to call you and say, what's happening with that? Mm -hmm. um, because we both are cheerleaders for the other. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the kingdom concepts we got to get straight is this thing called brother. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we are brothers in name many times, but we're not brothers in deed. But you and I are really brothers. I just want to pause and say that. No, no, no. Hey, shameless plug. Show enough, show enough. Uh, and it's sad to say, even with in the body of Christ, the fraternity of preachers. We say one thing with our mouth, but our hearts is in a totally different place. Um, right. You know, uh, uh, many preachers are their brother's killer. You yep. and I are each other's brother's keeper. And exactly there is, there's a difference. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I love it. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Uh, and you know, it's almost big bro, a doggone shame that we even have to make that known and clear. It, it used to be a time when um, brothers was really brothers, you, you, right. you, know, you know, but yeah. we have to go the extra mile. And I appreciate that, man. And you know, 
I, I, Bishop, you, you know how much I love you, man. You know, yes, sir. I mean, I mean, it's ridiculous and I'm going to get to it. It's just ridiculous. The favor of God that he has placed on your life It's re, you know, I'm almost and I don't say it lightly, man. I, I, I'm almost filled with, you know, you know, righteous indignation when I look at how much God has invested in you one vessel you want to say it ain't fair you know what i'm saying give me some of that but i'm gonna get to that later listen <laughs> listen bishop listen man and you know i'm telling the truth you can be modest if you want to you can be humble if you want to but you know that songs that made the works i've done speak for me but i i feel the same about you though bro i mean so i feel the same about you man when i when i see what god has assigned to your hands and and how God has just put a plethora of different gifts um, in your hands, uh, and and to see you manage them so, you know, so so properly, uh, it it makes my heart glad, man. Because um, you know that's what the kingdom needs. We need people who who efficiently do what they do, not just throwing stuff together and you know that'll do kind of mindset or mentality. But uh, one of the things I've always admired about you is you're just an excellent guy uh, from, from the way you present yourself uh, physically. You know, you're going to put your clothes on right. And we'll you try know, to do that. You know, <laughs> you're, 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 you're just a, a great model for, uh, for particularly young preachers, bro. And uh, I applaud you on that. I love it. I love it. I love it, man. I love it so much. Listen, Bishop, I, I want to. I want. Listen. I want to digress for a second. Your yes, old, man, your old man, your daddy was a prophet. Yeah. I'm talking about a real show enough prophet. No doubt about it. In 2020, I see bishops. I see pastors. I see quote unquote apostles. I see other ministry gifts, but where are the prophets in 2020? You know, Amos chapter three, verse number seven, surely the Lord God would do nothing in the earth unless he first revealed his secrets to the prophets. I mean, yeah. if your daddy said a thing was gonna happen, you can bet your last dollar that it was coming to pass. Old Testament call them seers. Right. I got a question for you. Where are the seers in 2020? Where are the seers in America's pulpits? Where are the seers in the body of Christ? We got collars, we got robes, we have chains, we got armor bearers. Where are the seers? Uh, I believe that they are here, but they have been blindfolded by, by worldliness. Uh, one, of the, one of the greatest parts of my father's legacy was he was a man that was given to really, really strong prayer. Uh, every morning, three o'clock in the morning, you could hear my father walking literally through the halls of our home, talking to God in an audible way. You know, so consequently, because my father had, you know, this, this sincere desire to communicate with God, the Bible says, if you draw nigh to God, God will draw nigh to you. So because my father drew nigh to God through the conduit of prayer, God drew near to him and God began to share with him things that are not shared with everyone. Um, I believe that, that, there are a whole lot of guys who have called on their lives, but they don't have consecration in their lives. Mm. That hands the hand of God to move in a, in a certain way and demands God to empower them or endow them with information. Uh, God ain't going to trust you unless, unless you, you have uh, him at the zenith and apex of your desires. He's not going to trust certain things in your hand. He's not going to trust you, and he's not going to entrust into your hands the mysteries unless, um, unless he is at the forefront in the helm of your ship. So I believe that, that, that they're called prophets. 
but I believe that like Jonah, they are running. Wow. That they have been blinded uh, by worldliness and and they have lost the things that necessitate spiritual power. Mm. Now, listen, we are living in a day when prayer is second fiddle to singing in the church. You know, we, we're talking about getting prayer back in schools, but most of us don't have it in our houses. And a man of God has a sincere desire as the deer panted for the water. So I it's for you. You know, we get to that place. I believe that we'll begin to hear from God again, and and you'll see the prophets, those seers, um, begin to arise in the kingdom again. So they they are here, but has been blinded by worldliness, carnality, flesh. Yes, sir. You know, well, they they've really become prophets for profit. Mm. Prophets for profit. Exactly. P R O P H E T yeah. or P R O L I T. That's exactly right. Get, 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 telling us, I mean, what, 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 what you, you got a seven in your telephone number and what your, what your yeah. name is. I mean, exactly. this stupid sack. That ain't going to change my life. That ain't going to no. change my life. I know my address. I don't need you to tell me my address. Mm. I know my phone number. I need you to tell me what God is saying in this season. And in this moment concerning my life, concerning the church, concerning the world, that's the job of the prophet. Prophet ain't running around talking phone numbers and addresses. Mm, mm, mm. My, 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 my. Listen, Bishop, I tell the church that I steward, I pastor, that there must be a place, there must be a place in the earth where the body of Christ can assemble and come to in the earth and receive what God is up to in the heavens. You know, yes, sir. if I want to know what's going on in the earth, I can turn on CNN, MSNBC, right. Fox News, ABC, or any other seat. You understand? Yep. But if I want a word, if I need to know what is going on in the heavenlies in 2020, in the midst of this virus, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of times that try the soul and the faith of men, there has to be a place, man, that I can say, just get me to Bishop Blake's and I know he got a word in his mouth from God. That's my, my father, one of my father's great sayings, uh, and I can hear him uh, saying it now, before you check in with the headlines of men, you need to tap into the lifeline of God. He was talking about prayer. But you know, my father was birthed in ministry uh, by a very, very prayerful pastor. Dr. F.H. Dunn uh, was a, was a, was a prayer, prayerful man. That was my father's uh, father in ministry. That, that's who nurtured him. And he cultivated my father on this thing called prayer. And, you know, embracing God in a very real way. And uh, consequently, you know, my father took on those attributes and he, he, he received, you know, just, just unheard of things from the, from the mouth of God, man. But Bishop, you know, while we're brothers, I also respect the anointing on your life. And yes, it, is, it is as if you, you, there's some continuity of that mantle with your old man, with yourself and with your brother, you know? Right. Um, 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 there's a void, however, there's a vacuum in, and, 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 and you're hearing my passion. And, and you, yeah. you know, these are private conversations. This is nothing yeah. new for you. We just, we just spill in what we talk about privately, publicly, right. you know? Right. I mean, that, there's a vacuum in the body of Christ for such power, for such persons, for such performance, for such demonstration. Paul said, when I came to you, I didn't come to you with excellency of speech declaring the testimony of our God. I came to you in the power and in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And in this pandemic, during this pandemic, and if and when we ever come out of it, 
there's going to have to be a demonstration in our churches, in our ministries, in yes. our pulpits. There's going to have to be, um, I, I believe something has shifted, man, that yeah. what has gotten us by in yesteryear, yester month, in the genesis of 2020, it's not going to be the same going forward. What we do privately going to tell off on us. We're going to know who got a word and who has a prayer life. That's exactly right. And, 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 and I think that we have to understand that noise and the anointing is not the same thing. Many of us have substituted, you know, the anointing in our minds for noise. Doc, there are a whole lot of things I hear, and, and it's loud, but it's not anointed. There is something about the anointing. You know the anointing because wherever the anointing is, change takes place. Mm. The Bible says yokes are destroyed because of the anointing, not because you're articulate, not because your voice is melodious, not because, you know, you have three points in a poem. The thing that is going to affect the lives of people and change the world is the anointing. And the thing that's going to differentiate us from the world is going to be the anointing. And we have, we have in this modern church, we have substituted the anointing for noise. And it's like sounding brass, mm. take symbols, because we are lifting hands without lifted hearts. Wow. And stop, 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 stop. We are lifting hands without lift lifting hearts. What is from the heart reaches the heart. Um, when, when, when they go to, when the prophet goes to Jesse's house, he's looking over, uh, his boys and, and, uh, he says, surely this is the one because he looks like the one, you know, he looks like the one. And that's what many of us have done. We know how to look the part. We know how to look the part. You know, they dress. Yeah. We know how to dress. We know we are articulate. We are, you know, we are astute. We, we know how to stand directly and we know how to, you know, pronounce our words properly. But at the end of the day, is there any anointing on what you're doing? And God reminds the prophet, he says, um, man looks at the outward appearance, but I'm looking at that heart. And that heart is what's going to determine whether or not God anoints you. Mm, mm, mm. You dropping that hard as well. And, and sadly, the truth is, a lot of us need an oil change, Doc, because mm. we are trying to fight today's battles with yesterday's anointing. We need a fresh anointing. Every day, I ask the Lord to anoint me fresh. Mm. I don't want people to just hear me, I want them to feel me. Mm. One I want them to feel many, many feelings. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, and if in fact they gonna feel you, it is because you've been filled that by him, mm, with that anointing. What they say about the disciples, we, we perceive that these men are ignorant and unlearned, but one thing we can't deny, they've, they've been, been with Jesus. Jesus. They've been <laughs> with Jesus. Get out of my Kool-Aid, man. I, listen, big, listen, big bro, I've been, you in Acts chapter four. Yes, and I, I've been teaching from Acts chapter four. God gave me a series of, of messages on this. I've been calling it a new day anointing, a wow. new day anointing. And I've taken it from John chapter two of him taking water and shifting it, turning it into wine. One, right. one season is over. The season of the law is over. A whole era, a whole dispensation is done with. And yeah. he's opening up the curtains on another season. You understand yes. what I'm trying to say? Yes, and, and you're going in a, in a new season, you're going to need a new grace. And that's what, that's what those apostles had in Acts chapter number four. They've been with Jesus. And when you get to verse number 33, the text says, and great grace was upon them all. And they, with great power, they gave witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Doc, listen, when we, the, the, the book of Acts is really the, the action of God mm -hmm. upon the church. It is, it, it is exactly what it sounds like. And when, when we spend time in the presence of God, we'll see God act. 
we'll see God move. The Bible says the people that know that God shall do great things. What? But you're making my baby bleed. <laughs> where are the signs? Where are the wonders? Where are the miracles? Where are the manifestations of grace in the church? Man, we, we got to get back to the landmark. We, we are so busy building pretty buildings. And, you know, I love a pretty building. I pastor in, in a couple. Uh, but, but we cannot get so into the stained glass, man, that we, that we negate the things that necessitate spiritual power. We got to get back to prayer. We got to get back to prayer. We got to get back to the altar. And we got to get back on our knees into a place of brokenness so that God can begin to share uh, that kind of power with us as a church, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, you're listening to Pastor X tonight. This is On The Spot. And I, my special guest is my covenant big brother, the Bishop uh, Sam Blakes of New Orleans, Louisiana. 504 is in the house tonight. The New Home Ministries there. Um, he pastors multiple congregations there in New Orleans and in Baton Rouge. Um, however, his reach is all over the nation. Yea, I dare say over the world. Um, what I want to do tonight, I want to get as many as you to share this, to hit the share button right where you are. Uh, hit the share button and uh, do me a favor. Help Pastor X and on the spot get this all around the nation all around the world tonight pastor x got his big brother bishop sam blakes with us tonight bishop let me pick back up something has shifted in the earth realm the whole creation is groaning and travailing in pain you sense it man you you sense the travail of the earth um, my question is, what do you discern God is up to? What, what do you sense God is saying? Definitely something is up. I believe, I believe that God is calling us back to, as we have, as we've been talking about, just a place of intimacy. Um, God is putting us in a place where we have nothing and no one else to rely on but him. God is, is calling us uh, back to the altar. He's calling us back to a place of intimacy. He's calling us to remember the things that we had forgotten. You know, we had, we had started depending on our little money. Money's running out. We had started depending on, on uh, jobs. Jobs are closing up. We had started depending on friends. Friends are dying off. Uh, and God is putting us uh, in a position where we have to solely and wholly rely on his hand for everything we need. You know, um, I sincerely believe that, that this quarantine, this, this locking in, this shutting in uh, that we have uh, been forced into is for the purpose not of Netflixing and chilling. Mm -hmm. I believe it's for the purpose of, of re-encountering and reigniting mm -hmm. Uh, the fire of God on the inside of us, man, and reestablishing our connection, and not only our connection, but our commitment to God. Um, and the person who does not do that and waste this time is going to be extremely sorry. Man, when I come out of this closet, you know, like Clark Kent uh, went in uh, to, to, to the phone booth, he, he went to <laughs> Clark Kent, he came out of Superman. <laughs> I'm coming out Superman, baby. I'm coming out Superman. Oh, man. I'm coming out with power. I refuse mm. to go through all this hell. Mm. I refuse to, to go through these difficult moments, these trials and tribulations and seasons of struggle and not come out. One of my favorite texts in the Bible is when God tells Israel, says, go borrow uh, from, from the Egyptians. He says, and you, you're getting ready to go, but when you go, you shall not go empty. I ain't coming out this thing empty, man. Mm -hmm. I am coming out with a different level of power, a different anointing. My church is going to send something different about my preaching when I get through. Mm -hmm. I promise you. Mm -hmm. They're going to know that I've been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a call for all of us as believers to really reconnect 
reestablish, uh, reignite, revive, resuscitate, you know, that anointing. Stir up that gift that is on the inside, man, so that when we come out of this thing, we'll see the hand of God move in the church like we've been we've been talking about uh, in, latter, in, in previous years, should I say. Bishop, you said something tonight that, listen, you've already dropped a, a, a lot of nuggets, but you said this is not a time for Netflix, chilling, eating popcorn, relaxing, I mean, laying on our laurels, becoming, right. you know, just, just oh, I, churches, the church door is closed and, you know, right. I, I don't have to go to choir rehearsal, don't have to go to prayer meeting, I don't have yeah. to go to this ministry meeting, but you're saying this is not the time to become at ease in Zion. Not the time, bro. This is not the time. Uh, this is the time to intensify our efforts to uh, to get into God's face. This is the time to intensify uh, our efforts to, to know God in a, in a stronger way and be more sensitive to the voice of God. Man, listen, when you come out of this thing, you ought to know God's voice so strongly and so keenly. Uh, you, ought to, you ought to be able to differentiate the voice of God from any other voice because during this time, you spend time in his presence. And you know, whatever voice you hear the most, you're the most sensitive to. Mm, 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 mm. You preach it, man. You, you miss that pulpit, don't you? <laughs> I miss it. <laughs> it's all over you, Doc. <laughs> it's, all, it's all over you, man. Hey, I listen, miss. listen, I ain't praying for you. I'm praying for new home, Doc. Doc, because look, man, when you get back to that church, oh, I've already given those my text, Doc. I've already chosen my text. He's already given it to me. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. <laughs> let us go. <laughs> listen, listen, you're listening on the spot. Hit that share button. Hit that share button. Listen, tonight, Bishop, um, how do. Um, listen, let's, let's, let me see if I can go here tonight um, and put you on the spot. Um, I'm here in Los Angeles. God has given me several works to steward, as you know. Um, you pray for me. Um, you are one of my accountability partners, one that I can confide in, one that I can go to for counsel, one that I can talk to. Um, um, me having the assignment of stewarding more than one congregation, um, you having the assignment, you're in New Orleans, simultaneously you are in Baton Rouge. You right. have a satellite church in Houston, Texas. I'm talking about, th these are not churches that you hit every now and then. I'm talking about, right. this is on a weekly basis. Yes, have a national um, TV ministry. Yes, you sir. know, uh, an itinerant revivalist travel yes, all over the nation, uh, right. jumping in and off of planes give me your frequent flyer miles and i fly yeah. for free because you can afford it you understand what i'm saying um say a word to the individual that is walk watching who is saying well that's too much i i just want I, uh I, I just want him to be here in baton rouge with us uh, I, I want all of his time. I, 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 I want him to hold my hand when I tap my toe. You know, uh, uh, I don't want, how can he pastor here and pastor in New Orleans and pastor in Houston, Texas? Uh, no, he's, I, we want our own pastor. Say a word. Um, how do you steward the assignment that is on your life of successfully pastoring in more than one location and you're preaching to thousands every week. Right. Well, um, P Paul uh, went to God and said something was too much for him. 
Paul, Paul went to God. He said, he said, um, something's too much for me. He says, uh, he says, and I want you to, to remove it. And the Lord gives him one message. And the message is my grace is sufficient. And this is my message to anybody who says that's too much. Uh, that's too much. Well, it's too much for you because you ain't called to it. But I'm graced for it. <laughs> wow. You, you ain't called to it, but yeah. I'm graced for it. I'm graced for it. You know, and I believe that what God calls us to, he equips us for. Um, one of one of the things my father would always say, and I always reference my father because uh, he was my greatest teacher other than God. Um, my father would often say, you know, that God gives responsibility to the ones he's given the ability to respond. If you were not able to do it, God never would have given it to you. So, so God gives me the grace to do what I do. And I know it seems like a lot uh, looking from the outside, but I'm graced on the inside. So God gives me supernatural strength. Now I know when to rest. I know when to take a break. I know when to go and sit down somewhere. I understand I live in a human body, but I also understand that I have a divine call on my life and uh, whom he calls, he qualifies. <laughs> bottom line. So, know. you know, God assigns something to your hands. Um, it might look hard to other people, but his yoke is easy and his burdens right. are light. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get do you ever get tired, Bishop? I mean, I mean, I mean, you you are you are carrying a lot, you know. You know, me and my assignment, I, I I carry a lot. And even with these churches that God has graced me for, um, you have been grace with so much more um um and um happy birthday by the way man i, I know the birthday okay. celebration is coming man i know y'all gonna do it up big uh i know you're limited by pandemic but every i think the last time i was in the 504 y'all y'all celebrated your birthday in right. some extravagant way i mean right. band quick style yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, black time, you know, hundreds upon hundreds coming to celebrate the shepherd, the man of God. Listen, happy birthday. Um, do you, Thank you bro. Do, do you ever, do you ever, Bishop, do you ever get tired, man? I certainly do. Mm -hmm. I certainly do. Um, I certainly do. And, and I think incumbent upon every, every pastor leader to know when to back off. I mean, you know, even Jesus took a break and went up into the mountains. Moses went up into the mountains. You know, every now and then, man, you gotta you gotta find your way to the mountains. You gotta gotta disconnect from the load. Um, I get tired. You know, sometimes I feel discouraged and feel my works in vain. That's what one of the writers said. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. You know, so so God gives me supernatural strength, but I I got to know when to sit my natural self down somewhere, and uh, give my body a break. Uh, honestly, bro, um, as we just before this pandemic happened, I had a conversation with God, and my conversation was simply, Lord, I'm I'm tired. You know, I had that conversation with God. And, and then the pandemic came. You know, even David said, he maketh me to lie down. Now you can't say, Lord won't make you do nothing. But David says, sometimes God, when you don't have the presence of mind or sense enough to, to sit yourself down somewhere, David says, he makes me lie down in mm -hmm. green paint. And um, so, yeah, sometimes I do get tired. Uh, I get tired of the load, but never the work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I get yeah. tired of the load, but, but but never the work. You know, one, one, one legendary pastor said, we get tired in it, but don't get tired of it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it, I love it. Listen, uh, speaking of seeing you on Instagram today, I, I can, listen, I, I, I may be sorry that I'm bringing this up, man, but I can honestly say you told me so. 
<laughs> you know, you told me, know what you're talking about. man, hey, <laughs> big bro, I'm playing catch up. I mean, I, I look at you, you're nearly at 70,000 followers on Instagram alone. This is right. not your Facebook page. This is right. not your Twitter account. This is has nothing to do with your YouTube account. On Instagram alone, you're right. at 70,000. Listen, don't rebuke me and don't give me my whooping too bad in public. Your little brother, I'm a little over 300. You hear me? And every time, <laughs> every time people like you will say, X, you need to be on social media. You need to be on social media. I remember us having a conversation. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, I just believe, this is my, my belief, bro. Jesus, if, if you look scripturally, Jesus was wherever people were. Mm -hmm. Jesus was wherever people were. Mm -hmm. um, and there are too many people who are accessible, people who will never come and sit in, in your church just haphazardly. People who won't see you, you know, just, just haphazardly because they ain't looking for Christian television like that. But, but they'll scroll past your page and something about what you say will reach them. You and I had this conversation and I told you, I said, bro, I said, you need to be on social media. Bro, I don't do it like that. I, my church got a page, that's enough, <laughs> you know? But look, look at the season we're in now. <laughs> look at the season we're in now, you know? But, one of the only means by which you can connect with your people now is the very thing you despised, mm -hmm. you know? But, but I give you credit because you're hitting it strong now, you know? But suppose, suppose you had already laid that, 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 that path. Suppose mm -hmm. it had already been done, you know? Because, you know, your ministry itself is something that, that people will embrace on social media. And that's what I was trying to get you to see. And that's what I've been trying to get guys all over the world to see. Um, I'm gonna get off you for a minute. Now let me get on this, 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 this guy here in New Orleans, young pastor came to me, said, uh, Bishop, uh, he says, uh, he says, uh, I, want, I want to grow my church. This is before Corona, COVID-19. He says, I want to grow my church. I want, to, I want to see my church grow. I want my church to expand. And I said to him, I said, um, I said, well, tell me this. I said, what are you doing uh, to grow your church? He said, well, I preach every Sunday. I said, that's good. He said, I teach every Tuesday. I said, that's good. I said, but do you have any social media presence? He said, nah. He said, I don't. He said social media is the devil, Bishop. <laughs> he said, the devil. He said, social media is the devil. Well, I want you to know, probably two months ago, he called me trying to get me to introduce him to the devil. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to know how to do it. Now, I'm, his, I'm, his sign, to tell you. I'm his Siamese twin. I know, I know. <laughs> I know, that's why I brought him up. You know, I tried to tell you, I tried to tell him, but now he's trying to embrace it. But you know, you don't you don't have a fire drill after you have a fire. You have a fire drill in preparation for the fire, just in case something happens. And one of the things that woke me up was this X. I went through Katrina. I went through Katrina, and I know what it feels like to be displaced from your people. I watch my people, you know, all over the nation, go all over the nation. Not being, not being able to minister to them. I, I went through Katrina. And when I went through Katrina, when this social media thing started popping, I said, well, I, I need to get involved in this because if Katrina happens, at least my people will have a conduit by which they can get to their pastor and their leader. Mm. And, and here we are in COVID-19. Nobody saw it coming, but guess what? I have not missed a beat, why? Because like the ant, I prepared mm. in summer because I, I knew the winter was coming. I love it, man. I love it. I repent. 
Listen, you and I <laughs> talked about it, and you're hitting it hard. And listen, everybody who is watching, X, what's your what's your Instagram? Uh, I am XLT. I am XLT. I A M X L T. Everybody, go and follow my brother tonight. Go and follow my brother. Go and follow my brother. Go and Man, follow. You too kind. You too kind. I love you, big bro. And while you're following me tonight, hit the share button right now. Uh, I need about 50 more of you guys to hit the share button right through here. You know, um, that social media piece is so critical, so important. If Jesus was alive, big bro, he'd be on social media. He sure would. Yeah. He sure would. Mm -hmm. and while, while, while the scribes and Pharisees would be sitting in the corner talking about social media is the devil. Jesus would be on social media. How do I know it? Because Jesus, you find Jesus sitting at a well talking to a woman that none of them wanted to talk to. Didn't want to While they were talking about her, he was talking to he her. Was talking to her. Mm, 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 mm. Huh? Jesus embraced what they detested. And that's why he could get 5,000 on a hillside and they couldn't get 50 in a synagogue. Mm, mm, mm. He embraced, Jesus embraced what they detested. And you, right. when you talk about the scribes and the Pharisees, you're talking about the religionists, the religious yes. community. Yes, it sir. is because of the traditions of men that we make the word of God of none effect. That's right. And, and it is because of our religious traditions that we are losing this generation. It is because of our traditions and us attributing stuff to God that was actually concocted by us. Mm. Mm. But we want to blame it on him because it's what we want to do and what we like. We are losing our children and losing our grandchildren simply because they love Jesus, but they detest religion. They detest religion. I love and it. Every time, every time Jesus encountered scribes and Pharisees, what was his what was his title for? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Listen, let's let's stick a pin here. Yes, sir. I've been telling my staff, I've been telling my church, I've been telling my leaders, chief of staffs, the ministry leaders here, those who are connected to me behind the scenes change or die the church must change or she dies and what i mean by dies i mean she becomes irrelevant you yeah. are the salt of the earth but yeah. if the salt have lost its savior it's good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the feet of men the foot of men uh yeah bro the church, the pastors, we who are, God has given us stewardship of his church. Right. More than ever, man, we got some tough decisions to make of how we do ministry, how we go forward. We cannot pour new wine in old skins. Right. So some of, some of the ways that we've done church before this pandemic hit, we cannot go back doing the same thing. Um, say a word, and you, you have no shortage of pastors that are tuned in tonight, that are listening tonight. Um, say a word to the pastoral audience, leadership and laity are not alike, um, surrounding this whole issue of the church having to make a change in this hour. Uh, one of one of the powers of, of my father's ministry was this, Doug. My my father died, you know, it, it, uh, in in his seventies, but he died with young people still in his church because of his willingness to to change. He was always willing to make the necessary adjustments. Um, and one of his philosophies was simply this. We, we date the method, but we marry the message. You know, we, we, we date the method, but we marry the message. And by that, I mean, you know, sometimes the way we do things 
has to change. Mm -hmm. Nobody watching me tonight, nobody watching us tonight has a typewriter in their house. Wow. Nobody watching us has bell bottoms uh, in the closet. Nobody watching us has a pit with the fist on it. Wow. Huh? Ain't nobody walking around with that stuff anymore. Why? Society has changed. Mm. But this is the this is the irony of it. And and this is the ridiculous part of it. We don't mind changing our jobs. We don't mind changing, you know, our our social outings. We don't mind our restaurant changing. We don't mind our hair salon changing. We don't mind our barber changing. But we don't want our church to change. And the church is dying because it lacks relevancy. And the reason it lacks relevancy is because we don't know the power of changing. Jesus steps up on a boat after Peter and the boys have been fishing all night long. And Jesus has the audacity to step on the same boat and tell them to take the same boat into the same water. But he tells them this time, go deeper. <laughs> Watch out to deep. time, he, said, he says, go deeper. What was he doing? He was telling them to change their methodology. And when they changed their methodology, they caught so many fish until the Bible says the net broke. What's, what, what, what is it going to take for us to realize, man, the necessity of change? A lot of us are married to methods when we ought to be married to the message. The message can never change. Our methodology must change. Our theology should never change. Our methodology must change, but our theology must never change. I love it. Uh, it. Okay, okay, let me give it to you like this. Mm -hmm. A good fisherman carries a tackle box. A good fisherman carries a tackle box. You catch a cat out there that just got a pole and, and you know, uh, one kind of bait, He's really not a good fisherman. He might catch something. He got lucky. But a good fisherman carries a tackle box. And in that tackle box, he has several different kinds of bait. Several different kinds of bait. Why does he have all those different baits? Because he goes there understanding, at some point, I might need to change. I might need to change. I might need to change. But now this is the trip. He has different baits, but he puts them on the same line. Mm. When he changes the bait, he doesn't change the line. The line is Jesus. Mm. That's our theology. Mm. But our methodology, what, how we do it, the way we do it, the how-tos of what we do, sometimes has to change, man. Um, I had a young guy, young pastor, ex, come to me. Um, about two weeks ago, and he said to me, he said, Bishop, he said, man, I, I, I can't wait to things uh, get back to usual. He says, I can't wait to get back to normal. And I had to look that young brother in his eyes and say, are you serious? Mm. Do you really believe things will ever be usual? usual. Mm. There is no more usual. Mm. The church change. The way we do ministry has changed. Mm. Those of you who, who have embraced social media and you plan on uh, abandoning it after you get back into your sanctuary, you make a grave mistake. Mm. I'm telling you, man, we are going to have to do ministry a different way. Mm. And we're going to have to break some of our, you know, our little traditions. We're going to have to stretch ourselves yes. and demand of ourselves prices we weren't willing to pay before. And we're going to have to embrace some stuff that we thought was not embraceable. We're going to have to change our method. And hold on to our message. That's the only thing relevant. I love it, Bishop. I, you chopping down some timber tonight, man. Listen, some sacred cows among us must die. They, they must. They must it, die. Listen, if they don't die, we will. Mm. Mm. If they don't die, we you will. You, Our church. I, I want to go back to something. And, and, you know, you often reference, you know, your father. Those who do not know your father, they don't understand 
the magnitude of the guy your father was. I'm, I'm talking about you, you have preachers, but then you have preachers. <laughs> you understand? You got my, my church. My church sits on a street named after my father. Right. That's just the gravity. That's the magnitude of in, in downtown New Orleans. Mm. A black man. The only other black man that has a street downtown New Orleans is Martin Luther King. Wow, wow. I can, I can go now to the corner of R.C. Blakes and MLK. Mm, mm, mm. Listen, one day, your little brother, I want your little nephew, I want X2 to be able to say that about me, his old yep. man. You understand what I'm trying to say? I want, I, want, I want Imani and Jordan to be like, that's my daddy. You know? yes, <laughs> look, Bishop. Your dad, you said one of the things that made him successful, one of the ingredients, I'm paraphrasing, is that, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, your dad was an old man, but he kept young men around him. Right, right. How critical is that? That no matter you know how seasoned and how populated the church is, you know, um, you, you, Paul you had a, Paul had a Timothy, Doc. Yeah. Moses had a Joshua. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's reason. That's a reason. Uh, I, sometimes I'll call you out of the blue and say, X, what you think about this? Right. You, right. I want to get your vantage point. I want to, I want to see it from your angle. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to just look at it from my 51 year old perspective. I want to look at it from your angle. I want to hear what you got to say about it because it keeps my mind from getting old. Mm. See, listen, listen, it, you ain't got to worry about your body. Just keep your mind young. Keep, keep, <laughs> your, mind, keep your mind. Don't, don't let your mind get antiquated and outdated. It, you know, to the point that, that all you're doing is putting paint on what you used to do. And you're not doing anything fresh or anything new. Mm, mm, mm. It would be wise for every old man to keep a young man around him and it will be wise for every young man to keep right. an old man around him they need right. each other right and my know. father every every morning my father would sit down at the table uh for breakfast with my brother myself and other young guys and he would just pick our brains you pick our brains and he was he was of the sort that he was not afraid to make changes and adjustments uh to the way they did things which which kept the church still attractive to young people mm. you understand what i'm saying his his church contrary to 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 popular belief just because you become an old man doesn't mean you, 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 you're not going to have, you're not supposed to have young people in your church. My father had a lot of young people in his church because he was always willing to make that adjustment. Of course, he, would, he wouldn't make adjustments that did not agree with the word of God. The word of God was his standard. Uh, but, but if it was religion and not word, my father would make that adjustment. Just because of that, he was able to make that leap into this generation. I love it. Now, you talk much about your father, but also you talk a lot about your brother, who is your yes. father's namesake. And right. I've never seen two biological blood brothers work as flawless and seamless, effortlessly as Sam Blakes and R.C. Blakes Jr. And yeah. as it is told, you are the younger brother. Right. Started preaching first. Right. Then your elder brother came along and started preaching after you. Well, right. well after you, though you right. you was preaching first, you beat him to the punch. Your ministry took off. You was the boy wonder preacher traveling yep. everywhere. But when your brother started preaching, it is amazing to see less experience, 
but yeah. you immediately submitted, Sur yielded, surrendered unto your elder brother, though you was preaching far greater, longer years, right. more well-known, more well-traveled at the time right. than your big brother. Right. What, what made you do that? Uh, the way I was raised, mm -hmm. the, way, the way we were raised. Um, my brother and I, you know, in Ephesians, it talks about submitting one to another. Mm -hmm. Submit one to another. Um, my brother learned how to respect each other's gifts and each other's anointing. That there were that that certain areas my brother is just an expert at. And when we when we encounter those areas, I humbly submit to his authority because that's what he's good at. There are certain areas where I'm stronger. And when we get to those areas, he submits to my authority because that's what I'm good at. So you, you, we, don't, we don't have this, this flexing of the muscles, trying to determine who's the biggest and who's the baddest and who's the brightest bulb. We understand that, um, that we complement each other. We understand that at the end of the day, you know, if he goes up, I go with him. If I go up, he goes with me. And um, people didn't understand that. As a matter of fact, I actually had a pastor to walk up to me and ask me, man, is this real? Do you guys really get along like that? Or are you just putting on? Guys actually believed, because you know my father left a lot, a lot of ministry. Um, they actually believed that my brother and I were going to fight over who was going to take which portion and who was going to take the other portion. They actually were expecting that, but we weren't raised that way. My brother and I are the best of friends. We're not just brothers, that's my dude. And um, he undergirds me when he needs to, I undergird him. And uh, I have no problem following his lead. I don't care how much longer I've been preaching. You know, dude is just great at, at, at what he does. And um, he has no problem following mine, man. It's just, it's a God thing. It's it a is. God thing. It's, it is. And it, it's, it's, it's a wonderful picture. It's a wonderful sight. And those who have asked you behind the scenes, I mean, as it relates to the authenticity of what is put on public display, um, no, no pun intended. And, and I take the liberty to defend them. And I don't even know who they are just because what you and Bishop R.C. Blakes Jr. model, it is no precedent, it's no reference for it in the contemporary age. I mean, right. you all, two brothers are literally modeling, pioneering, treading this uh, pathway for others to follow. And it is almost, you know, um, too good to be true, but in fact, it is authentic. It, it is the real. I mean, I know this personally, privately, when the yes. lights and when the cameras, all of that stuff is off, you make it be known that out of all of the, <laughs> well-known pastors that you have not with and you fraternize with uh, and, and anybody that is somebody, that's who you are running with, but you make it known that your brother is your best friend. My dude, that's my dude. Uh, you, you know what the trip is, X? When, when we were little boys, I can remember uh, so vividly, my father sitting my brother and, and myself and my mother down. He would do this, have these family meetings. And the family meeting was just basically him telling us what he sees in the future for us. Mm -hmm. And this boy, he recognized the call to, to, to the prophetic and all of this kind of stuff. You know, he was just the pastor of New Home Missionary Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. But he would sit down and tell us, I see one day, 
you pastoring in one place, your brother pastoring in another place. I see a church in another city. And, um, and when he got through with all of that, we were little boys. He reminded us, he said, now, I want you all to love each other. Talking to me and my brother, he said, because you're all you got. He says, when your father leaves, and we were little boys, he says, your brother will be, will be the best friend you have. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Now, wow. Now, wow. That's a tearjerker, man. Look, yeah. look, look, you said that the name of the church was New Home Missionary Baptist Church? Yeah. Well, legally, we are still New Home Missionary Baptist Church. We're a Baptist church. You wow. know? But, yeah. but I've been back all my life now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 you, 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 you Baptist born, but that that's that's some apostolic oil on your life, that Pentecostal. Yeah, you Baptistal, that listen, here, here, here's the question. But you advertise as new home ministries. Here it is, here's the caveat: a free spirit church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, most typical missionary Baptist churches. Yeah. are not free-spirited churches. So what does free-spirit church mean? If it's in the Bible, we believe it, um, and, and, we, and we embrace it and we practice it. Um, it means that, that we are solely and wholly, you know, guided by, by the dictates of the scripture, not the traditions of men. And... Uh, proudly wear our Baptist label because um, as my father said, you know, it, it, our, Dr. Bishop G. Patterson was a great friend of my father and he, he solicited my father at one point to bring new home into Church of God in Christ. And, um, and as great of friends as they were, my father never did it because he said, this is, this is where God saved me. This is where God changed me. And this is where God wants me to be. And he says, when I, when I go into the store and I buy a Coke, I don't buy it for what's on the bottle. I buy it for what's in the bottle. It's the content that matters. Um, so we embrace whatever the word teaches. And we fully embrace that. We don't just say that. We embrace whatever the world, word teaches. And, and um, we, are, we are free spirit ministry. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Listen, it's been fun, but I got to run, man. I'm so happy to have you. But before we leave tonight, I want to close by putting you on the spot. And listen, before I put you on the spot, you're listening to On the Spot. This is Pastor X. I got my big brother, Bishop Sam Blakes of the New Home Ministries in the 504 um, there in New Orleans, Louisiana in Baton Rouge, churches in Houston, Texas. Listen, tonight, uh, thank you for allowing us to come into your space and gracing us with this wonderful opportunity to have an online conversation. Would you do me a favor? Would you hit the share button before we log off? Um, but I wanna put Bishop on the spot, hit the share button, like us because we like you. Um, Bishop, thank you so much, man. Listen, I've been hobnobbing with Bishop Noel Jones, your, your guys, you know, yeah. Bishop, Bishop Omer, Clarence McClendon, and all. I just been having all of my friends, all of my covenant brothers, my mentors. Thank you for uh, joining us tonight. But can I put you on the spot? Certainly. Um, we hear a lot about essential. What is essential versus what's non-essential. You know, when this pandemic first hit, only the government allowed essential businesses to stay open. Only sure. essential workers was getting their pass. Other than that, you was relegated to the Safer at Home Ordinance. Right. Um, during this pandemic, man, we haven't had any choirs singing. Mm -hmm. We haven't had any wave banner flag wavers no praise dancers haven't had any ushers right 
no, no greeters. Right. But you've been online every other day, multiple times a week, preaching, yeah. teaching the word of God. As a matter of fact, Bishop, what, what's your YouTube channel? Uh, Bishop Samuel R. Blix on YouTube. Bishop Samuel R. Blix, YouTube. Listen, y'all don't leave my church and join his church because you listening to Bishop on YouTube. And, and, and what's, give, give me your social media, Bishop. Uh, Instagram at SR Blix, Twitter at SR Blix, uh, Facebook. I have uh, my page is Pastor Samuel R. Blix, and my profile is Samuel R. Blix. Listen. Not as if he need additional followers tonight, y'all. Uh, he's Come on, plenty of room, plenty of room. Help <laughs> the poor, help the poor and the downtrodden. You know, you understand what I'm trying to say. I am XLT. Help, <laughs> help the brother out tonight. Listen, Bishop. Yes, sir. I'm sure you've been praying through. I've talked offline to you. I'm sure you're praying through the modifications and alterations you're making as a pastor, as a bishop there, you know, at New Home. What, what, what are some of the things that God is dealing with you that are essential in ministry versus non-essential going back into the brick and the mortar? Going, is, is things going to be changed? Is things going to be different? Are you still praying through that, waiting through that? Have you start talking to your team, your staff about that yet? Or are you just holding that stuff close to your vest? No, uh, we, we've, we've started communicating concerning that, man. Of course, you know, we're going to do all of the, take all of the preventative measures we can uh, to make sure that it's a very, very safe environment. Of course, um, from my vantage point, um, we won't be back in our physical sanctuary in a minute. Uh, I was I was shooting for September, but I'm not. I don't I don't think that's going to happen, my brother, because you you know how populated our church is and how closely people sit with each other, and, and the large volume of crowds that that yeah, you carry. Yeah, man, and and this is my this is my my theory on it. And and listen, it's my theory. It ain't God's word, you know. And I'm not. I'm not at anybody who does differently. Uh, I'm just, I'm not going to allow people to come back in the sanctuary. I'm not gonna ask you to bring your mama if I ain't gonna bring mine, you know? Um, that's just, that's where I am with it. So until the Lord gives me uh, leave to, to do otherwise, we're gonna be doing it online. But when we do go back, uh, I believe that we're going to, we one of the things that's going to be different, man, is they're going to have to mask up. They're going to have to mask up. Um, we're going, we've, we, we just spent $7,000 on sanitizing stations for all over the building. You know, $7,000 on sanitizing stations, man. You know, just because we want it to be extremely, extremely safe. Because, you know, people are coming back. And many of them are coming back with, with mindsets that have not yet been liberated to, to really, you know, really embrace, you know. But I believe that eventually God is going to bring us back to this place where I can embrace, you know, I'm a very personal pastor. I'm the hugger, yes, sir, and all of the above. And uh, I'm not going to do the rest of my ministry walking in fear, that's for sure. Uh, I'm going to get back to it. I just ain't hugging right now. <laughs> I love, I love you. You know, um, but things are going to be different. Um, one of the things that, and, and this kind of off the, the bitten path, but one of the things that's going to be different is, is, is our timing for service X. You know, this, this pandemic has shown me that a lot of the stuff we have done in service has been unnecessary and it's been time killers and uh one of the reasons i believe that one of the reasons our male population is is so short in church is because you know men are very very time conscious you know they want to get out they want to get to the game they want to they want to do it so timing is going to be different i'm not we're not going to be there all day Trimming. 
Yeah, we're not going to be there all day. It's one of the adjustments I think we're going to have to make because people are getting used to, you know, this, this timeliness that we have with, with our virtual church. And uh, when we get back to our actual building, I believe that we're going to have to be very, very time conscious and all of the above. So there's several adjustments that's going to be made. Um, and the wise pastor is the one who knows how to make the adjustments. Just don't, just, just don't give on, on Jesus' lordship. Don't give no, no, no slack on that. But everything else is adjustable, you know. But just like everything else, I'm going to be on your line extracting those intellectual properties from you, saying, share, big bro, share, share. I want that, I want that, just like I do as always. No, no, share that with me. I want some of that. I love you, man. You know love that. You. Love you. I love you so much, man. And I, I want to appreciate you for coming on tonight without any hesitation. Soon as I shout out to you, you said, let's do it. Um, divorcing yourself of your busy schedule. I know even in this pandemic, you're busy, man. Well, you and I, you know, we're just doing publicly what we do privately anyway. I you know. know. I That's how we do privately, so there I it love, is. Uh, love you. If I don't get there to 504 first, when you get to the 323, the 310 is going down. I love you, man. Love you, bro. Thank you. Peace. Blessings.